Oh, hey there, everybody. How's it going? Henry here. We're going to go over portal vein Doppler ultrasound. I'm just going to pretty much go over the protocol and some of the, some um, pathological findings. Um, these are the sites that you want to Doppler. Uh, IVC, hepatic veins, uh, main portal vein, right and left portal vein, hepatic artery, splenic vein, so you can begin with the IVC. Uh, every place is going to have a slightly different protocol. Um, you could also include the aorta if you like. I, in my, myself, I include the aorta in my studies. Uh, but most studies you can begin with the IVC uh, right behind the left lobe of the liver. Um, you can scan midline slightly to the right. And you'll see the IVC right here. Posterior to the caudate lobe. Uh, you'll see it entering the right atrium in many cases. You take a grayscale image. A color Doppler image, you see it going into the right atrium right here. A color Doppler image and a spectral Doppler image. The flow should be towards the heart. All right, once you're done with the IVC, you can begin with the hepatic veins. There's usually three of them. So pretty much at the same level of the IVC, you can go transverse and angle a little bit cephalid. And you'll see what's called the Playboy Bunny sign. Here you can see why they call it the Playboy Bunny sign. Um, you have your left hepatic vein and your middle hepatic vein and the IVC. Around here you see the liver with color Doppler. You see the left hepatic vein and the middle, middle hepatic vein. The right hepatic vein, in some cases, in some patients you can see that the, the right hepatic vein in the same image. In other cases you might have to angle laterally and go either subcostally or through the ribs to see the right hepatic vein. Uh, this is my hepatic veins so when I scan through here this vein was perpendicular to the not perpendicular but slightly perpendicular to the transducer so it didn't fill well with color Doppler so angling more laterally can give it a can get you a, a nicer angle so you can fill with color Doppler and you can get a good sample with color and pulse wave Doppler here's a view of uh, an image from Sonocyte where it looks like you might have all three hepatic veins. However, you can still have a right hepatic vein coming off of here. And this is just a, a divided middle hepatic vein. All right. So here are the three hepatic veins, left, middle, and right with color. So you're going to want to Doppler, pulse wave Doppler, the left, middle, and right hepatic veins. You see here left, mid, and right. Here you got the normal waveform of the hepatic vein. Here are the components of the hepatic uh, waveform. Uh, the first part is atrial systole, the second part is ventricular systole, and the third part is atrial diastole. So for the normal portal vein, uh, the diameter, uh, usually the upper limits of normal for diameter, the cutoff point would be 13, but this ranges from study to study. Uh, it can go up to 16 with inspiration. Um, an increase in diameter can indicate portal hypertension. So the flow of the, bl the blood flow in the portal vein should be towards the liver or hepatopedal. Hepatofugal would be flow going away from the liver. Here's a diagram of the portal vein. Here you have your main portal vein, your left portal vein with its branches, and the corresponding segments of the liver, segment 2, segment 3, segment 4, and then your right portal vein which bifurcates into right anterior, with other branches denoting segments eight and five and right posterior with the other segments seven and six. Here's another diagram of the, the portal vein. The portal vein is made primarily of the splenic vein, the inferior mesenteric vein, and the superior mesenteric vein. An important fact about the por portal vein is that two thirds of the oxygenated blood flow go to the liver from the portal vein and the other one third is provided by the hepatic artery. Here you have a view of the portal vein at the portal hepatis. This is the main portal vein. Here you have either common bowel duct or hepatic artery. Within the portal hepatis, you have what's called the portal triad, which is the portal vein, the common bowel duct, and the hepatic artery. You also have um, nerves and lymphatics coming out from the portal hepatis and going into the portal hepatis. You want to take pictures with and without color. Uh, measure the diameter against usually again usually the cutoff point is 13 millimeters. 
Um, you can get this view either either um, subcostally, angling cephalid, or through the ribs. Here I have the, the, the diameter is from 7 to 15. Again, that varies greatly with a cutoff point usually of 13. So here's your main portal vein without color and main portal vein with color and then going into the right, right portal vein. So again, the main portal vein flow is hepatopetal towards the liver. Abnormal flow would be going away from the liver or hepatofugal. And a little trick I like to, to use to remember would be fugal, uh, fugitives running away. So a fugal flow is running away from the liver. The main portal vein then goes and bifurcates into right and left portal vein. Here you see the left with its branches and corresponding liver segments. And this is a right with its right anterior and right posterior branch. Here you can see IVC, hepatic vein, hepatic vein, and a little piece of another hepatic vein there. So this is the right portal vein bifurcating into right anterior and right posterior. The flow in the right posterior, at least in this view, is going away from the liver. So if you Doppler that, the flow is going to be below baseline, but that's that's normal. That would not be considered hepatofugal. It's just the flow is going away from the transducer. And then the left portal vein with its corresponding branches. Here you can see a little bit of the cotyl lobe, IVC, and a branch of the hepatic vein. Here you can see flow going towards the transducer, towards the liver. All right, so then we have your hepatic artery. Um, you can get your hepatic artery at the celiac axis or the seagull sign, which is the aorta. Celiac axis, splenic artery, hepatic artery. Here you have your IVC, vertebrae, left lobe of the liver. You could also get it at the at the portal hepatis, along with the portal vein. So here you have portal vein and hepatic artery. So I like to image uh, at both sites. Next is your portal splenic confluence, which is right here. Here you have your splenic vein, portal vein. This is your pancreas, gastroduodenal artery, common bowel duct, IVC, aorta and left lobe of the liver. Here the flow should be going towards the liver. Next you can um, Doppler the splenic artery as well at the celiac axis. You could also go to the splenic hilum and image the splenic vein, splenic artery. Check for varices here. You want to measure the spleen, make sure there's no splenomegaly. Spleens in adults are usually less than 13 centimeters. Uh, more recent studies would uh, put that at 11 centimeters or less. All right, so when you have portal vein thrombosis, uh, you can have uh, two phases, acute and chronic. So acute thrombosis often presents with pain, and uh, treatment with anticoagulation is standard care. And it probably and it commonly progresses to chronic cavernoma if left untreated. Here's a view of a portal vein thrombus right here. You can see the anechoic part of the normal vessel, and then this is a thrombus here. Here's another portal vein thrombosis. Here you have the portal hepatis, and you can see a filling. You can see the thrombus filling the portal vein. Chronic portal vein thrombosis can lead to portal hypertension and uh, development of collaterals in the portal hepatis, which is called uh, cavernous transformation. Um, collaterals can form in many other places too, like the gallbladder, the spleen, the esophagus, the stomach, um, subcutaneously, or what you have the caput medusa sign. It could also lead to life threatening bleeding of these varices. Here you have an image at the portal hepatis showing cavernous transformation of the portal vein. Here's another image showing cavernous transformation at the portal hepatis. All right, so he, these are a few of the varices that can develop or collateral pathways. So you have the caput medusa, esophageal, stomach, splenic, spleenorenal, to name a few. So this is a case. This is a case of a precanalized para umbilical vein. Usually, uh, you'll see where the ligamentum teres in sagittal will be dilated and with color will fill with flow and and color and pulse wave Doppler. This is what the caput medusa sign looks like. Multiple varices under the skin surface. Here is a spleen with multiple varices of the splenic hilum. 
So a treatment for portal hypertension is the TIPS catheter or transjugular intrahepatic portal systemic shunt. It's put in through the jugular vein down into the IVC and creates a artificial channel or communication between the portal and uh, hepatic vein circulation. It's very good at treating and reducing ascites, reducing esophageal bleeds, and reducing a lot of congestion in these varices. This is done in uh, this is done usually by an interventional radiologist. So here's a view, a grayscale view of a tips coming from the IVC into the portal vein. So it will be shunting the flow from here. The normal tips should have the normal tips should show color Doppler flow throughout its length. The velocities within the tips are usually higher than what you would expect in a normal portal vein. Uh, normal tips velocities can vary from 90 to 190 centimeters per second. Normal portal vein velocity flow before entering a tips is usually 37, uh, 30 centimeters per second. It can have a phasic waveform. A problem that could be encountered in a, in a tips catheter is a stenosis with velocities greater than 190 centimeters per second at the stenotic segment and velocities greater than 90 centimeters per second at the non-stenotic segment. Another finding of a TIPS complication would be a total occlusion, which would lack any color Doppler flow. So here we have a case of TIPS stenosis. Uh, the mean portal vein velocity is a, the velocity at the portal vein is 26 centimeters per second. Here, the right portal vein flow is going towards the liver. It should be going towards the TIPS catheter. So here we have a normal TIPS. You see here at the portal hepatis, and you can see the TIPS going here into the IVC. The flow going hepatopedal in the main portal vein towards the IVC here, and the velocities within normal limits. And here we see a complete TIPS occlusion. See the hypoechoic material here, which is thrombus. Well, that pretty much sums up today's uh, video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, my name is Henry. Please leave any questions in the comment section. Thank you.